So good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Hukalo TV, and my name is Rowan, and I'm here with my beautiful partner Kim, who will be channeling today in today's webinar. We're also joined um, online in the room by some very beautiful people, some very beautiful energies that have come today to be with us, and we're very thankful for them being here. Um, Sabrina will introduce those people in a very few minutes. I've just got a few announcements I want to make today. Obviously, today's 5th of September 2015. And Jim is away, so we're doing um, our regular webinar with just Kim today. There was going to be a special guest, and there still might be. So, uh, yeah, fingers crossed on that one. So it might be a nice little surprise at the end. Um, I just want to mention about our new Hukalo Sunday regular um, meditation webinars that we're going to be doing in the future, every Sunday. Um, before the start of the work week, if that's your kind of game that you play, um, if you want to get up and motivated and set up with intention for that, we're going to be doing some guided meditation just to help out people with meditation. Um, they're going to be very simple guided meditations for roughly any time from half an hour to over an hour. Um, this week, um, I put myself forward to doing it, so I'm really excited. We're going to be doing one about laughter. And that is going to be at 7 p.m. EDT. So it's actually 9 o'clock in the morning on Monday for me. So i got to get up early uh, for a change. And uh, each week we'll be having a different member of Hukalo introducing the actual, um, doing the, 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 the meditation, the guided meditation. So one week it might be Jim, one week it might be Roxanne, one week it might be Sabrina, Sarah, Safira, whoever wants to do it. And we'll also be inviting other people in to come and do it as well. And it'll be a very simple, totally guided meditation. So you just get comfortable and we just take you on a journey. Um, and yeah, this week, tomorrow, um, it's going to be about laughter. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Very light-hearted, enlightening meditation. Um, just to mention other things that are going on, um, Gratitude with Will is going on every day at the moment. He also has his Holy Fires on Wednesdays. So I expect there'll be one up for that. Um, every Friday we have the Quantum Galactic Healing with our special uh, superstar, Sarah, who started doing these amazing healing events. Um, that's at 4 p.m. EDT. Um, we also have our newsletter um, forming, a monthly newsletter. So if you're interested in getting involved with that and you have the skills and the know-how, um, the newsletter will be really good. It's going to be a monthly thing. Um, last thing I want to mention is... Um, uh, about the channel panel on the 19th to the 20th of September, uh, Awakening from Within. That starts at 5 p.m. EDT with eight different channelers over two days. That's also live. You can actually go there live and join in, and it'll also be online as well. So if you check out Trev Channeling, um, you can find that on Facebook or online, and you can sign up for that one there. So without further ado, I'd like to pass the talking stick, or the virtual talking stick, over to the wonderful Sabrina so she can introduce everybody and bring her beautiful colors to the room. Thank you. Uh, Roy, are we going to be um, telling jokes after the laughter uh, meditation? <laughs> if you can stop laughing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can just see that one. Hopefully we can focus <laughs> and not just laugh. <laughs> Well, I think we get Will and Kim together. It's going to be um, <laughs> this is starting already. So <laughs> you can't even say it. <laughs> or they just laugh at my meditation. You know, that, that's the other option. So yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Welcome everybody. Um, today we have in the room with us Brian, Guru Dan, Johannes, Makiko, Noha. Roxy and Sean and Sheer. So welcome everyone and to those that are viewing and those that will come in later on. Um, Kim will be channeling for us today. Uh, I don't know if she has a particular entity that's coming through, um, but we will find out. Um, <laughs> and I want to say thank you, Kim for channeling for us, for helping us alone on this journey, and for uh, bringing 
more energy into the group and um, helping us become more of who we are. So. Thank you, Sabrina, for suffering. You're welcome. Um, I don't know. How do you? How, are you ready now, or do you have sure. something else to say? I would like to say one thing. Um, next weekend, I'm having a get together at my house. Um, and we will be having, I believe, one of the events, the the one by the fire. Um, hopefully, life, you know, Wi-Fi cooperating with us. So we would like to invite the members to um, join and, and enjoy the energy from that because I'm sure it's going to be, you know, very strong and it will benefit many. So <clears throat> please do try and join that. I will post it, of course, and let everybody know um, now that we have a schedule, we could do that. So I just want to give a heads up for that one, and that would be a night. And the webinar will be live from my house. So many of us will be together. Uh, two from here. <laughs> Makiko and Brian will be there. So yay. Yay. <laughs> so anyways, without further ado, I hand it over to Kim. Thank you, Sabrina. Hi, everyone. I'm back again. <laughs> um, I want to always, as always, give a shout out to Jim and uh, just can we all just send him a big shot of love wherever he is, whatever he's doing. May it be awesome. Um, always, too, I want to thank those who facilitate these webinars Roy, Sabrina, Dan steps up. Sarah steps up, there's many of you who help out and I'm really very grateful for that because without that kind of structure we couldn't bring this to you. Um, so yes, thank you everybody. Um, I'm really excited about some of the things that I'm seeing going on in the Hangouts and you know, people are bringing new ideas and uh, certainly ascension, evolution. Um, and it's really wonderful because it's giving the membership a whole range of interests and some of them are going one way and some of them are levitating another way and it's, it's really awesome to watch people grow and find their purpose. So yeah, I just wanted to say that. Um, Alright, well, I think I've done enough talking. I'll be quiet now um, and I'll take off and I'll see you soon. So enjoy. Hmm. <clears throat> Greetings. This be Alma Talk. Greetings, Alma Talk. Welcome. <laughs> Hello, Sabrina. Is that you? Yes. Yeah. This be. Um, How are you? Are you well, my friend? Yes, I'm very, very, very good. Very good. Very good. Mm. May I address the group first initially? I understand there will be questions. However, there is something I would like to share with you all. With your permission, I will proceed. Yes, go right ahead. Thank you. I would like to address a very powerful word that carries a very strong vibration with it amongst your community and amongst many others. It's the word ascension. Now, understandably, ascension gives the connotation of moving upwards. Now, the opposite of ascension would be to descend. This is also possible. I would like you to take these two ideas and melt them together and look at them as progression. 
progression is a productive direction for the human being. Now may I give you this example. As you move towards an issue in your life, let us use the analogy of a mountain. You may ascend one side of the mountain and you may descend down the other. You may tunnel through the mountain or you may travel around. You may stumble, you may fall, you may find it an easy journey. It is all progression. The idea of progression still maintains and encompasses growth. Growth is what you look toward. Growth is what it is you innately look to find. Yes. Ascension does give the connotation of greatness, of height, of hierarchy. This is something for just this example, I would like to eliminate this idea. I would like you to look at the idea as progression. Yes, you view ascension, you see your feathers flying in your wind. You understand the lightness of this concept, yes, it is above you. Ultimately, that feather will land, as do your party balloons. As you release them up into your sky, ultimately, they will land. Now, may I share this with you? As you move through dimensions, you understand the beings become lighter. Adding a dimension does not add a frequency of max. Adding a dimension adds a frequency of vibration. I simply wish to share that point with you and I wish for you to ponder it please. Now, progression. You have moved through around your mountain. You have moved. You cannot not move. You are on a planet that eternally revolves. You consistently move. You progress. Now, in your progression, as a human being incarnate, as you meet with the goal of your journey, I would like to ask you to please reflect Please reflect, yes, celebrate the arrival, yes, encompass the joy, yes, honour the greatness you are that you have achieved with humility, yes, build yourself a compass. As you progress through your 3D reality, please build yourselves a beacon. Through your past experience, you may find that there is great guidance, that there is a theme, that the universe wants you to perceive what it is showing you. So please, once the celebrationary gestures are over, do not simply move forward, reflect back. There is guidance there for you and there is guidance there for others. For at this point, you may become teachers. You may share your experiences. Your experiences may be something that you have worked towards for what you call years. They may be what you did in the hour before you attended this webinar and this now. It matters not. It is the journey where you assess yourself the response you receive around yourself and your self-responsibility. Now, ascension is addressed with the idea that everything is boundless, everything is limitless. My friends, may I share with you, not only in your three-dimensional world, Amongst many other dimensions, there is mass, there is challenges such as yours. Even though you appear then to yourself to be of greatness, 
that they raise above you, no. We shall talk about progression. We shall talk about these beings being part of your progression. They are progressing. You are progressing. They're the process. The process is what is important. As you come to your point where you can take time to stop and look and reflect, please learn the lessons. Look to where you held yourself accountable for your actions. Where you found yourself in a situation where you chose to be responsible for your actions. You chose to be the one who made the assessment of yourself kindly, gently, and then you corrected. The correction is imperative. If you are identifying something that is not working in your spiritual world, then yes, you must alter it. You must simply correct it. I will use this language deliberately. Correct it. That's all that is required. Correct it. Now, the idea of progress. It allows the idea of connection in all directions. Particularly side to side. I would like you to imagine this. The reason that this is important is because this is where source connects you each to each other. This is where the productivity comes. This is where the process is. For the three-dimensional human, this is where the activity happens for your incarnate growth to become complete. So directionally, rather than ascension, you are using a process of spreading in all directions, meeting with each other, interacting with each other, with the common denominator being that you are all part of the mighty source. Now I ask you, as you address each other, Please be mindful you are addressing a greatness, a being of source. Not only with those in your alien realms that you believe to be of higher dimension, not only with those in your spiritual realms who you understand to be intangibles. You already have the skill set. You are bored with the skill set. Whether you enroll the intangibles, whether you are able to apply them to your life, understand them, emanate them, the telepathy, the psychic abilities, the channeling abilities, all of the wonderful things that humans are coming to understand, they have the ability to achieve. However, it is not imperative to being a three-dimensional human. It is not absolutely necessary that you may seek these ideas, these intangibles to become a part of you. Now, yes, self-responsibility. It encompasses integrity. It encompasses morals. It encompasses ethics. It encompasses love. It encompasses Many things that are spoken about on a daily basis. I would like you to address something, for at this time I am seeing it vastly. The responsibility you hold to yourself to shine your greatness of source amongst another and to receive it from the other that you are interacting with. View each other as the greatness of source. Speak to each other as the greatness of source. Love each other as the greatness of source. Disagree with each other as the greatness of source. Your belief systems are very, very important to your individual journeys. However, this applies across the board, as you would say. Your directional progression. Now, in this process, 
and this is where I wish to finalize this journey with you in this process on your planet and not alone your planet, many others and yes it is being addressed, there is an ability that every human is born with effortlessly. It gets disguised. It is called many names. It is distorted and yes, it is within the places of your governments where it is necessary. It is within your medical systems where it is necessary. It is within your emotional health where it is necessary. And yet it is so lacking. And your planet and your populace reflects this on a regular, daily, momentary basis. This idea is empathy. Think of that. How much does this planet lack empathy? How much does the populace lack empathy? Does empathy bring you the ability to be responsible for yourself? Does empathy allow you to understand when you are shining in your light of source and you are encompassing and loving one of another? Gifting each other empathy. Always. Please. Use this as a conscious idea. Consciously be empathic. Consciously be one who cares about the emotional response of another. This then makes you responsible for yourself in how you project yourself, in the ideas that you wish and you would like to see imposed upon others. This is not why you are here. You are here to have your own individual journeys. For that to happen on your planet in the state that it is right now at this moment, empathy, deep empathy is necessary. So I would simply like to leave you with that idea at this point. Please enroll it in your daily lives. Use it. It is there for a reason. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for those words. Um, does anyone have questions on what Amatar just said uh, or something wasn't clear? Yes, I do. Help me speak. Hello? Yes, we hear you. Okay, Amatar, uh, hello, this is Noha. Yes, Noha. Um, my question regarding what you're saying. Okay, we feel the bliss, we feel the state that we are in a good position. We are progressing and everything and reflecting light. But some people around us don't get it, you know. They don't yeah. receive it. Uh, this really annoys me. <laughs> I don't know how to get through to them, really. So how, what, what shall we do? This is my first question. Yes, I would say to you it is not your responsibility. Their belief systems are not your responsibility. The best way that any human may influence another is to demonstrate their belief system, to live their belief system. As one is looked at as they live the beliefs such as you hold, with grace, with wisdom, with humility, with the brilliance that you radiate of source, simply by demonstrating you are influencing, you cannot not influence. So with these others around you who you feel it would resonate more for you if they adopted your belief system, yes, understood. However, if it is not part of their agreement, if it is not part of their journey, if it is not something they are drawn to, then you can relieve yourself of the idea that you must impose yourself upon them. Simply become what it is you wish to communicate. 
it is far more powerful to put this idea into action than to try to impose your words upon them. Do you understand? Yes, of course. The other question is regarding myself, personal question. I hadn't got a chance to speak to you for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm just going to tell you, could you please update me or tell me what, I've, what is there in store for me regarding my ascension and what I'm doing. And it's, I have this urge that I want to speak to, to Kerr or I'm sending him t telepathic messages that I want to go to the crystal room. I hope the message has been delivered. Yes. No, hi, Great. yes. It has been noted, yes. Please rest assured. Takur right. is aware of this and also so is the Palladians. Please, yes, no harm. It will be done. Great. Anything you want to say extra? Yes. No, I would like you to reflect upon yourself with kindness and love and as gentle as you possibly can be with yourself. I would really encourage you and be inspired by humans who may sit with themselves and honour themselves. Please, do this for yourself, Noha. This is very important because it may be scarcely around you in your daily life. So I'm asking you to give it upon yourself. And then, as you communicate with others, you may do so coming from that same space. You may communicate gently. You may be kind. You may be soft. You may be vulnerable. You may be wonderful. So this is a message I would share with you at this time. And no harm, please, have faith. Have faith. You are doing very well. Thanks a lot. Well appreciated. Much love to you. Well taken. Thank you. Much love. Much love. I'll give space now. Thank you. Makiko? Yes. Hi. Um, hello. hello. This is Makiko. Yes, Makiko. Hi. Nice to meet you. And you? Um... I have a question, a little off topic. I hope you don't mind. Certainly. I've been experiencing an um, unusual magnetic field and weather related disturbance. In last yeah. week or so, I was wondering you could um, shed some light into. Yes. Do you mean on the part of your planet in which you live? Yes, that the side of the Atlantic, the where I live. Yes. So did you use the word drowned? I'm sorry. I'm not understanding your question very well. My apologies. Did you use the word drowned? Do you mean that there was excessive rain or such? Um, like. Magnetic field, or it's very magnetizing. It's like it's a, I'm not sure it's a soda flare or yes. harp. Yes, yes, yes. I understand now. Thank you. Yes. May I share this with you, Makiko? The energy of your Earth Gaia. She is also a mirror of what the populace is doing around the planet, how the populace is behaving, how the populace is projecting. Now Gaia is affected by this. Your planet Earth becomes affected, affected, not affected, affected because you are afflicting it upon it. Now she is receptive of this. She will receive it, she will modify it, and she will produce it. She will project it back out with the intention of healing and being supportive of those who inhabit it. Now, as this happens, and because you are all vibrationary beings, and because your planet is also vibration, fields such as magnetic, as you call it, yes, 
Gaia will very much produce those in an effort perhaps for those in this particular area who are looking for grounding. Grounding may be necessary. It may be something as simple as that. It does not necessarily need to be something scientifically complex. Understand you are part of your earth. You are part of your weather. You are part of your reality. You are part of a collective. So if there is a magnetic field that you are experiencing, may I ask, how do you feel this in your body? How are you aware that this is occurring around you at this time? Um, I'm getting a strange signal. Also, I feel something crawling under my skin, like up and down all the time, and just um, making me yes. go crazy. <laughs> yes, yes, I understand. I imagine for the human that would be unpleasant. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. I Oh, it is fine. Humor is wonderful, yes. I understand. Yes. I would say to you, Makiko, you are very sensitive. You are sensitively <laughs> attached to your planet Gaia. And yes. you are experiencing also something that happens where there is communication of frequency with what you would call, now I want to go back to the word progression. You are experiencing progression from a species that is actually on a planet next to yours. May I put it to you that way? I wish to maintain this deliverance as a progressive idea and not necessarily an ascension one and where we address other dimensions. But uh, yes, in your yes. instance, you are feeling and experiencing frequencies from elsewhere. Um, is this why I'm receiving two conflicting signals constantly? I feel like two different softwares are running in uh, opposing directions. Yes. <laughs> yes. Makiko, whenever there is communication from other realms, other spaces, Space species, other beings, other spirit realm, there is shift and there is duality. There is always more than one experience to be had in any communication from these realms. So yes, you may be experiencing two kinds of what you call frequencies. Very often some may feel far more than two. Yes. I congratulate you that you are feeling and sensitive to. <laughs> Means you are sensitive. You are understanding your own vibration also. And you are able to negotiate the difference between the duality and move through it. So I congratulate you, my friend. Please do not be fearful of this. Please understand that this is you simply receiving a communication. Now you may communicate back and you may settle this, you may ground this within yourself if it is causing you discomfort. If it is not, then perhaps you might like to explore the ideas. Embrace one and look into that and then allow that to be as you perceive it and then embrace the other and do the same. Um, is this why I have to go to certain building or museum or churches? Yes. <laughs> yes. Places where there is resonance of history. Yes. That's exactly yes. happening to me. <laughs> yes. Yes. You are reclaiming parts of yourself. You are actually, this, this is driven by your spirit realm. The fact that you, be, you are being drawn to places of historical significance. You are being drawn back to look at something, to, to work on something, to identify something from a past life experience. Now, whenever it is you go to these places, what is it you experience in your vibration as you enter? Please may I also elaborate on the word vibration. I would like to use the word resonance. 
So as you move into these places of historical significance, please wander around as you sit still perhaps in the church. This again is another time to look inwards. This again is a time for you to embrace yourself. Now as you do so, as you look inwards, you understand how you are feeling and then as you wander mentally or physically using your alter eye or your physical ones, look for resonance. Look for the remnants. Look for the relic that perhaps may stop you for one second and make you look twice. It may even perhaps from a distance, if you were to look at a choice of relics, and they may see one that simply appears a little brighter to your eyesight. Please go to it. If you wish to explore what these messages are, they are of significance, however, please understand they are not absolutely imperative to your well-being. And if you wish to do this, then please follow these guidelines. As you approach the relics that are most significant to you, that you resonate with, then research them further. You will find that there is many aha, as humans say, <laughs> moments. And you will come to an understanding. Yes, thank you. But um, I may ask, there's a, some spirit will interfere as I pursue one realm or one artifact, I'm not sure should I listen or not. <laughs> How do why, you know? Why are you not sure? I was, ho I was hoping you could tell me. <laughs> yes, my friend. <laughs> It is absolutely appropriate for you to experience this. <laughs> Please, may you ask me the question in a different way? I wish for you to seek the answer here. Please ask me the question in a different way. Um, in my 3D limited brain, um, there's a lot of things uh, talking to me right now that, um, however, two of the forces are very conflicting to each other, almost as if they are fighting or some sorts of things that I feel the conflict in a way, in a comical way, however, I think it's important for me to understand. <laughs> yes. So one day I go to Metropolitan Museum, going to Pyramid, and the other day I go to Cloister. And um, it's so strange. In a particular day, I had to go a certain place. Yes. Sometimes making me go crazy. Why I have to? I cannot wait to go into this building. And then uh, I, I find something, and I wish I didn't. But anyway, it's all kind of connected. Those things are all connected. I'm not sure why um, I'm so drawn to it. Um, yes. So, Makiko. <laughs> Please trust yourself. The messages that you are receiving, they are messages. They are as if you would be talking to another human. And please, they are in a different realm, of course. But understand you have just as much connection to them, if not more, as you do to your fellow humans. When you are all connected by a source, so too is your spirit realm. The confliction is simply that you are being offered a choice. You are being offered a choice to add or detract from your belief system. Now, you are just simply going through the process. You are progressing. You will come to a resolution. Now, the process that brings you to that resolution is going to be the idea of trusting yourself. So yes, you may be having external communications, but what are the ones that you wish to take on as part of who you are? What are the ones that resonate with your belief system? Look closer. 
Understand the vibratory communication. Recognize it for what it is. Experience these places that you are drawn to. Allow them to be what your spirit realm is exposing them to you as right at this time. It is intense. It is intense. I understand. Yes. Please trust yourself, Mikiko. Do not look externally for the answers. They, you, you all already have them. <laughs> Simply are given a choice. What a wonderful thing. It is a choice. Okay. I, I don't wanna I don't wanna take too much time, so but thank you. Thank you so much. Very helpful. Well, thank you. You're well. Sure. Hello Almatog. How are you? Sure. Hello my friend. Well thank you and you? Um I'm great. Beside the fact that uh, tomorrow I'm going to the army for four days on my birthday. But everything beside us, um, wonderful. Very good. May I ask, how is your channeling going? Um, well, I didn't experience channeling, but I did try the psychic uh, mushrooms, uh, golden teachers, for the first time. Yes, interesting. Um, yes, it was a very unique experience. It's like um, communicating with um, certain uh, trees and certain things in nature. Um, I don't know what exactly happened, but um, I think I got many, many, many different lessons that I couldn't take with me. It was uh, overwhelming in a very good way. Understood. Yes. Do you hmm. have a question for me? Yes. Well. The first one is, um, I actually spoke with my galactic father, with Ramlak, and he said that um, soon enough we could um, meet, probably holographically. They are walking Lovely. with him. His peeps. <laughs> um, I want to know um, how close is it, if you can ask him. Last time he said that they're going to work on it. I know he's a very busy. Yes. He will make himself available to you. Are you addressing him? Are you requesting conversation? Uh, he comes when I ask, yeah. Yes. He finds the time. Yes. So you feel that you are still lacking communication or interaction even though he is with you? Well, I want to see him or the group fit near with my own eyes, like experience experience it um, in more yes. alive way, if you want to put yes. it that way. Yes. Yes. Understood. Sure. I will also encompass your experience that you share with me now with the idea of progression. Mm-hmm. Three-dimensional humans very often require practice. It is mm -hmm. not shameful. It is actually the practice of mastery. Does It does not imply ignorance. It implies that you are beings that are able to maintain focus, to make great strides in your lifetimes. Now, mm -hmm. be one of them. Excellent. You are understanding when he is in your presence. You have identified your vibration and you have identified his. Very well done. Now, if you wish to connect with him, may I ask you to begin with the light of source, that one common denominator that connects every incarnating spiritual being in the galactic. Please. Call on that. Use that tool. It is at your disposal. It is also at his. Now, mm -hmm. connecting in this way, it is not going to give you the three-dimensional experience that you are seeking. Understood. It will, however, form a way for you to communicate. A way, again, I will bring you back to trust yourself. 
trust the communication that you are receiving and that you are projecting. At the same time, be responsible. Honour the grace of the being, honour the grace of Brahma as you co-converse. You mm -hmm. will come to have a deeper form of communication with you. It is simply that both you and he require further practice. So please take the time, honour the process, progress forward and make the connection. Okay. One last thing, if there's any messages for me. Yes. Sure. My friend, please continue. Please continue. You have built great momentum. You are moving mm. forward. And at the same time, you are finding ways to ground yourself. This is a wonderful balance. I congratulate you. Please be mindful that this is how you ground yourself, that this is what it looks like, that the way that you resonate and I see you vibrating right now is exactly what grounding and congruency looks like. It is in the tone of your voice. Mm -hmm. Please no. hold on to that, understand it. If you shift outside of that, that is fine, it is required at times on your three-dimensional planet. And when you need it, you now have a reference point. You now understand that this is a point that you are in this moment is your ideal state. So when yes. you feel flustered perhaps, when you feel perhaps a bit misguided and you would like to feel otherwise, perhaps a bit more peaceful, then use this reference point, use this memory, bring yourself back to this point and rebuild the sensation. Okay. Thank you very, very much. Much You're love. You're welcome. Much love. Hello, Amita. It is Sarah. Yes, hello. I'm not hearing you well. Oh, um, it's Sarah. How are you, Amita? Sarah. Hello, yes. how are you? Doing well, thank you. Um, Very good. I have, I have a question about last night. Something happened to me energetically, yes. and it took hours, and I have no idea what happened, and it was so strong that I thought I'd ask. Yes. You count them as hours. What was the experience that lasted for hours? Um... I felt energy all over my body and in my hands, and it was just, it was kind of crazy. Yes. Yes. Were you resisting it? No. Very good. You will experience this again, Sarah. What this is, is actually you melding into the mass around you. Uh, can you please explain? Yes, as everything that has taken mass in your world and in others, it has a vibration of its own. Now as you connect with your own vibration and your own frequency, and as you become effective at doing so, then you may also understand the concept where you become a molecular being and so does the mass around you. You essentially disintegrate. Now that sounds as if it is a, a negative. It is simply a language. It is a very positive experience because it is allowing you to shine the light on oneness. It is allowing you and showing you your ability to be connected with everything. The next step is to be connected with everyone. So the impact of this energy was allowing you to join with the mass that was around you. Again, Sarah, if it happens further for you, please allow it, welcome it, encourage it, trust it. Be very understanding that you are safe. Be 
understanding of the experience. It is a mysterious energy. Now give it a name. You feel right now you describe it as energy. Please give it a name. Give it a name that comforts you. Give it a name that you may also reference, that you may move back to. But this is a spiritual experience. This is you connecting to oneness. Oh, okay, so it's not like it's a uh, download or a um, new entity coming in. No, no, not at this point. Okay, no. you are still integrating. There is much that you have integrated, and as a result, the integration is going to shift and change, as does your experiences. Do you understand that? Yes. The choice in which the directions, as I spoke of with the progression, the choice in directions for you is a different number as it would be for another. So mm -hmm. in your case, at this point, your integration, the idea of integration, includes you becoming one with your environment. Breaking it down, breaking yourself down, looking beyond mass amongst everything that you stand around, perhaps your bed, becoming at one with your bed. It is an experience of becoming complete pure light and also everything appears to the human as it is horizontal. Mass yeah. disappears, mass appears to melt in this process. If you allow that energy to continue and play out what it requires, what it is asking of you, then this is the experience you will have. Understand, you are in complete authority of this situation that you may withdraw from it as if you choose. So that if you do feel that this is no longer serving you, it does not resonate and you may eradicate it out of your belief system. No, I just wanted to know what it was because it was totally different from anything that had ever happened. So Yes. Yes, it was you. It was part of you integrating further with you. Okay, thank you very much. And one more thing, um, is there anything, any messages for me from spirit, angels, aliens, whoever? <laughs> yes, you are in touch with all, Sarah. Yes. 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 I will make a request here to you from Gaia. Your yeah, healing yeah, hangouts yeah. when you need to and you focus on Gaia and you are very well trained in understanding the needs of Gaia and when she wishes to feel your love. She does identify your love. And as you practice this as a group, Gaia listens. Please know that. Gaia feels your love. She appreciates your processes that you offer to her. And she appreciates your progression. She will support you throughout your progression in this incarnation. So I would like to say to you, please continue with these very important hangouts and perhaps dedicate some more to Gaia. Wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. Johannes? Hey, Alma Tog. This is Johannes. Johannes. Hello. Hi. I had it dropped in my head when, when Sher was at, um, he was telling about the experience that he had with. Can you speak uh, a little so louder, Johannes? Yeah. Is it better like this? Um, no, the you... phone's a little low. I don't know why, but if you if you can hear me now, I I can hear you well. Okay. Okay. The question dropped to my my head when Sher was speaking about his uh, s uh, psilocybin experience with the mushrooms. Your thoughts about uh, that? experiencing something different with uh, psilocybin? Yes. It is a choice, my friend. Again, I will bring you back to belief systems. I also bring you back to progression. If you have a belief system where you may 
enroll and embrace the idea of using substances such as this if you believe them to be safe and you believe them to be necessary to your growth, to your experience, to your process of progress, then yes, my stance is to follow your intuition, follow what your desire is. If you wish to have this experience, then yes, I would say to you, move forward. It is your choice. You have free will. I would like to also say, Please, as I referenced, be responsible for yourselves. Be responsible for what occurs during these moments where you are experiencing altered states. Make sure that you are safe. Ensure that others are safe. <coughs> Excuse me. And nothing untoward to anyone else will occur around you as you practice this. So yes, if it's necessary for you in your belief system to experience this, please do it safely. Please be mindful that if, as many other things on your planet, if they are misused, they are very damaging. Be mindful of that too. Please look to the great honour of source in yourself. Look to the greatness. Do you need this experience or do you simply need to connect to source? Please just consider that. Thank you very much, Alma Talk. I, I, if I can, I just have two more quick questions. Um, something was hovering over Miami Airport. There's some video over it like last week. I just wonder what it is that is. Uh, uh, passing across the sky on this video? Yes, in, in your Miami. Yeah, it's like uh, the video is from Miami airport. Somebody's standing there filming it and it happened like last week or something like that. Yes. Yes, could you describe what they saw, please? It's like a long, it, it, you know, like uh, there is this uh, dot of, of light that is passing uh, th uh, passing across the sky and but behind it is this like white um, like a trail after it uh, yes. but really huge and in front like where the light dot is there's a great amount of energy so it's, it actually looks like uh, okay, this is gonna be funny, but it looks like a sperm, like you know, like the head of a sperm, and then there's a tail after it. Yes, I understood. So I just know what it is. Yes, this was actually a very interesting experience. Yes, it would be natural to look to the aliens, and they were involved, but this was actually an experiment. It encompassed the spiritual realm as well. So there was a visual, there was an attempt at a visual concept being presented to the humans that was a cumulative effort between the spirit realm and a highly evolved alien realm. Now, they did not know as they practiced this how it would present to the 3D human eyes. Also, whether or not it would alter your vibrations. So this was actually a study, both for the humans to experience it, it is a new occurrence, but it was a study also for highly evolved beings elsewhere in the Galacti. And they wished to present it and see what the response was and the vibrationary change around the area where it arrived, the atmosphere it moved through, etc., etc. They were measuring much, also including the reaction of people such as yourself. This was very unusual and not something that you were likely to be see seeing again terribly soon, but this is what the occurrence was. Okay, just a quick last question. Thank you for your answers. Um, I've been stepping across, uh, like many years ago already, I was uh, informed about uh, days of darkness um, in, in, the, in the future that we it's a positive thing. It's not. It's not a negative. I don't want to scare anybody with this, but it's. I've been told also that it's going to be 
three days of uh, of darkness and uh, if that is going to be so then my question to you is how could um, we I don't want to say prepare ourselves for it but like mentally how how should we view it when these days of darkness will come if they will come um, then um, what 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 should we do under these days of darkness? Let's say let's put it like that. Understood. I understand your question. Once again, this is about encompassing your belief system. I'd like to bring you back to the beginning of the mountain. As you stand in front of the mountain, perhaps you are not aware of how it is you will conquer it. So what you do is you find the pathway that seems the most obvious to you. Now humans all think differently. Humans will view a mountain in many different ways and explore ways to manage it in many different ways. Now, do humans only ever reach one mountain in their lifetime? No. There are several. These days that you speak of, my friend, there has always been predictions, prophecy that these periods will happen and several, several abundant hundreds of times in your past on this planet there has been prediction of such events. Now I would say to you, look to your lifetime, look to simply this lifetime there was premonition that there would be days of darkness and you experienced them and you moved through them and only you know if you were affected by them. Perhaps you were not affected by them because you were not aware of them. It is that simple. Awesome. If you wish to manage this, if you wish to manage this prediction of these dark days, then shine a light on them. However, please do not give them too much power. There may be a learning curve here for some people with their belief systems. And if that's the case, then so be it. But I would say to you, it is only if you choose to accept that this is a reality that is going to occur for you that this will be of concern. So make the choice, please. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Johannes. Hello, Alma Tuck. Um At this point, I would like to see if, uh, if Kim is thirsty, if your lips are dry, if, uh, Kim can take a little break. Uh, we have a lot more questions for you, um, but I would like to see if Kim would like to get a drink. Thank you. I will just take a drink quickly. One moment. <clears throat> hmm. <clears throat> Thank you, Spring. Oh, Please yeah. continue. Okay, uh, Tasha is next. Yes. Tasha, are you there? Tasha, you're muted. Hello. You're muted. There we go. Hello. Hello. Hi. Yes. Hello. Hello. Oh, you know what? Let me pick up the speaker. Sorry. It's probably kind of not coming through very clearly, right? The speaker? I'm not hearing you well, no. We can't hear you I'll now. Share you that. We can't hear you now. <laughs> Okay, um, uh, she drops, she'll be back. Um, Neil was next. 
Hello, on the top. This is Neil. Neil, hello. How are you? I'm excellent. How are you? Very good, thank you. I welcome. enjoyed my visit with you. Thank you very much for the invitation. Yes, you're welcome. Okay, I have a question now. I have had a, you could call it a sexual relationship. I know it is not actually sex, but it would be looked upon as a sexual relationship with a Liren and the astral. And this has happened, I believe, on Gurfik Nia. And also, this happens in dream time as well, other dreams outside of Gurfik Nia. Now, I would like to know if on Gurfik Nia, is this the past life incarnation of this individual, or is it the individual in astral? Are you asking me that you are having astral experiences with other beings or one other being that you believe to be from Gurfik Nier and they are sexual experiences? Is that yes, correct? This, yes, this is an individual that I know and in my reality now. Although what I want to know is, is this relationship I'm having in the astral with a past life incarnation of that individual? Yes, that is very accurate. Yes. I will confirm this for you in that there is no concept between Gurkhik Nia and the human race at this time that embraces the idea of what you would call sex, astrally or otherwise. It is not something that is imperative to the goals that Gurkhik Nia aimed for at this time. But yes, my friend, definitely, you may move back through your lifetimes and I would ask you, as you have these astral experiences, if you can, take a look at yourself. Perhaps you are identifying the one you are meeting. I would ask you to look at the one you are. You may see yourself in this past life reincarnation. So yes, I would say you are accurate, yes. Okay, Okay. one more question I have is this. Um, there is a ship above Earth just now, um, and it has many uh, future incarnations of a lot of wanderers on it, a group of wanderers. Now, this ship is called the Ezekiel, and these, these entities have come back to help us right now. So do you, un do you understand this so far? Uh, yes. Uh, your language is a little unclear. Okay, sorry. Okay, so there is a ship above Earth at this moment, at this time, and yes. the ship has the ship has come from the future, and it has many incarnations, future incarnations of many individuals who I know. Yes. Now this ship is called the Ezekiel. Yes. Now, I want to know the connection between this ship and the story from the Bible. Ah, yes, I understand, yes. This is something that, again, it comes down to belief systems. Now, if it's a prophecy that was in your Bible and you resonate with that idea, then yes, my friend, that is what it be. It is perceptual, it is individual, and you are also, because you are referencing your Bible, you are referencing your spirit realm also. If this is a reality that your spirit realm is presenting to you for your belief in religion, and yes, that is honourable, please do not be held to think otherwise, then you may explore this idea, this shift that you believe to be on earth at this time, harbouring the secrets and wonderment that humans far enjoy exploring, then please, yes, if you may move toward it and explore it. If it is for your benefit, you will be able to come in contact with it. Now, there are others who may not hold this belief system and they may not experience it. Please remember, you are wonderful manifestors. If there are stories told that resonate with you, then yes, it is likely these stories will play out in your life at some point or they were an experience from your past. It is unusual to have a premonition unless you are actually 
in the process of manifestation. I do only say unusual though because it is becoming much more common. Humans are coming to understand that they can get a glimpse of their futures at points in time. Now I am talking individually. I am not talking as a group with a belief system. I am talking as an individual. For well, even their perception of the belief system that is being projected to them and another may be completely different. Your understandings may be completely different. So what you just described to me, another may know of and describe it in a completely different way. Therefore, their experience is altered. So my friend, if you believe this to be happening, if it is part of your experience and your journey, then yes, it is here especially for you to experience in the wonderment and especially for your growth. It is special, special. Embrace it. It has a purpose for you. It's beautiful. Okay, and lastly, um, are there any messages for me at this time? Yes. Please continue to explore. You are enjoying this exploration. You have a curious nature. Feed it. It is healthy for you. It will bring you much pleasure in your future. It will take you to places that you thought you perhaps would never go. So please enjoy this part of your nature. Curiosity is a wonderful human trait and it will assist you greatly as you move forward in your progression and you culminate with souls. Perfect. Thank you very much for that. Much love to you. Much love, dear friend. Tasha? Hello. Hello. Is it Amatak? Is that how you pronounce it? Yes. Hello. It's nice to meet you, Amatak. Yes, you too. What's your name, Tosh? Tasha? Tasha? Mm hmm. Oh, yes. Hello. Hello. Um, are you able to connect with my hybrid children? I learned that I have um, several. Um, other than the Yael, I have the I have the uh, aquatic hybrid children. Yes. And, and a reptilian child. And um, yeah, I'd really like to connect with them, if that's yes. possible. Yes. It's actually not something I'm authorized to discuss at the moment. Oh, However, okay. I would, I would simply like to ask you to become clear, put some time in and become clear on how many of these children you have. Okay. It's not that I may answer anything for you at this point in time, but I believe it is something that would be important to you to understand. Please look for the resonance. Look for the resonance as to how many, not necessarily the species, but as to how many. For in future, that answer, that question will be answered. Okay, so you think that it's important that I find out how many instead of connecting with the yes. ones that I already know of? Yes. It may be that the ones you already know of are the only ones that you have. However, I'm asking you to explore that. I would really like for you to be prepared when you have the opportunity to ask this question again and get answers. Well, I just learned about the aquatic and the reptilian. I already knew about the three Yael children. Um, yes. So I just wanted to know what kind of aquatic child is it. But I understand if you uh, yes. don't want to talk about that. Okay. Yes. It's no not that I don't want to. Please don't misunderstand. It is not going to serve you to know this at this point. Okay. What, the knowledge that you do have is enough for the moment. Yes. Okay. So, yes, please just focus on how many for the moment. Okay. And then um, a parallel life that I'm living as a blue Palladian um, or a Donna. Um, does she have any messages for me? Yes. 
do you know that you communicate with each other quite often? Are you aware of that? Yes. But I'm still not getting a clear answer. But yes, I do communicate with her a lot, even though I don't know what we're communicating about. <laughs> yes. She does not use language when she communicates with you. She reaches out to you both psychically and telepathically, yes. So this would be why you are not hearing words. Um, I've had an experience with spirit before, and it was... It wasn't words, it was through my body. So would that maybe be the way she would be connecting with me as well? Yes, if that is the way you have been op able to open yourself up and connect with another realm prior to now, then yes, most definitely. They would look for the path of least resistance. You're familiar with this. So she, yes, would look forward to using this idea in contacting you. Okay, beautiful. Thank you so much. It was lovely meeting you, Alma Tech. Oh, thank you. Much love, my friend. Love. Greetings, Alma Talk. How are you today? This is Guru Dan. Dan, hello. How are you? I am squishy. How are you? Not squishy. <laughs> yes, I wish I could say I was squishy. Well, maybe someday you can be squishy. That'll be good. Perhaps. I am. Um, I didn't have any specific question. I just basically wanted to greet you and uh, send you love and ask if uh, you have any. Uh, special wisdom you can impart upon my brain. Oh, dear Dan. You are a very precious soul. We talk often, my friend. You are doing very well in what you are working to achieve. So I would like you to know that I'm supporting you in this and that there are times when I do come to visit, when you have your lower moments, simply to embrace you and hold you and raise you so that you may continue on this wonderful journey that you are on. I wish what? you, Dan, to relax. I wish for you to simply rest on your laurels for a time. It is a time for you to regroup, retreat and regroup for just a short period for long enough so that you may collect yourself and return in your greatness. Thank you right. for coming to speak with me, Dan. Thank you very much. It's been lovely to hear from you. Thank you. Yes, it's nice to see you too. Thank you so much. I'll see you again soon. Yes. Very good, Dan. Thank you. Valerie? Yes, thank you, Sabrina. Hi, Alma Talk. I was just Hi. Uh, <laughs> much love. love to you. And you, my friend. I have a quick question. I've been hearing really loud pitched ringing in my ears. And mm -hmm. it's interrupting with my meditation as well. Yes. Can you explain that for me, please? Yes. It is frequency. Where you are vibrating at the moment, it is placing you within the field of certain frequencies that humans would not normally hear. What I would suggest to you to eradicate this is to substitute the frequency with something else. Now, because you are limited with your 3D auditory senses, the way I would encourage you to do it would be to shut down your senses and then activate another quite strongly. So when I say shut down, I mean close off the eyes, close off the idea of being inside the body, close off the sensations of feeling, close off the hearing, shut down the hearing as best you can. Then I would like you to vibrational area, doesn't matter what it is, whatever comes out, use your voice, bring it up. Bring it up through the chakras, to through the throat. Use your voice. It may sound deep. It may sound guttural. Do a form of humming, a form of what might sound like the word no you use in your is, meditation. Comes down, um, use your voice. Allow, allow this um, up, vibration to move through, through your through body. Use your voice. Second hour, so. Okay. Yes, yes. Use your voice. 
Use your voice to clear your body of this frequency. Now, when you are making this sound, please do not concentrate on your auditory abilities. Concentrate on the vibration of your body. This is what needs to be moved. The frequency needs to be shifted. It needs to be changed. Now, to do that, this is very effective. Replace it and this will replace it for you. Then this high-pitched noise should disappear. If it does not happen after the first time you practice this, then just simply repeat it a couple times, a couple more times further. And then if it does not dissipate, please come back and get in contact with me. This is very important. Thank you so much. I appreciate your advice. Much love to you. Much love. Sharon, would you like to come up and ask your question, please? Yes, thank you. Hello, Alan Talk. Hello, Sharon. Um, I just had a question about my uh, meditations recently. I had a really nice one last night, and um, I was welcoming, you know, other dimensions as well. Um, I had a lot of energy moving through. Would you mind possibly? enlightening me on um, advice on reaching out to that or um, maybe what it was even. <laughs> yes, if I'm understanding your question correctly, you are meditating and you are experiencing shifts in energy, is that correct? Yes. Yes, and you would like to know what that is, yes? Mm-hmm, yes. Yes. It is, it is you, as I, as I have shared with you many times before in the group, not you particularly, Sean, it is a case of you becoming very familiar with your own vibration. This is you experiencing you in its fullness. Now, this is a very powerful experience and it is, of course, one that is hard to miss. However, you have accessed it. You have opened the idea of the portal to that that is you. You have looked at yourself in a vibrationary level and you have looked at yourself in the presence of source. This is why it is so powerful. This is also why you are not necessarily looking to outside of yourself that these energies are coming to you. What is actually happening as you experience this is that you are projecting, you are radiating, you are affecting your auric field and affecting the environment that you are in. It is wonderful because your reach is becoming further. Your love, your ability to encompass, your ability to influence, it is becoming further grown. You are learning how to use source. You are learning how to understand the power of your vibration. You are becoming a master of it, Tron. This is wonderful. I encourage you to continue. You will begin to receive energy from external sources and what it will be is other humans that you may not necessarily know in your three-dimensional realm. However, it will be from the human collective and you will connect there and when this happens, it will bring you a great shift in energy. So please continue. This is wonderful. What an excellent example. Well done. Thank you. That's so awesome to hear. You're welcome. That was Shrone. Now, Roe, you're, you're next. Uh, greetings, Amatok. Question from the website for you. Yeah. It's to do with, um, there's a lady called Nancy who's a member of Hukolo. Yes. She is inquiring about a certain stasis of the body. Yes. She asks about, she's been told about the Andromedans. Yes. Are putting, have bodies in stasis. She wants to know what the mechanics are and what is this stasis state exactly. Do you have any uh, information on that? 
there are many belief systems around this idea. Mm -hmm. Sure. It depends on which one she subscribes to. Now, it's interesting that she uses the word mechanics. She's not looking at it from a spiritual aspect. She's actually looking at it from a very three-dimensional aspect. I resonate with that. And yes, it's understandable. You live in a three-dimensional realm. Now, the mechanics of it really, I would say, do they really matter? If it is a belief that it is occurring, then I would say, look beyond how it's happened, what is the point of it? Mm -hmm. So again, come back to the idea of progress and process. That is the loading. That is the lessonary. There is no purpose in understanding the mechanics. The purpose is in the ideal. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Any more questions? Tasha. I'm back on the tech. I just have a quick question. I know that there's a lot of healing going on in my body, a lot of healing. And yeah. I understand the healing and the pain that's going on between my female organs um, yeah. or uterus or whatever. Um, but these migraines that I'm having are just killing me. Oh, I shouldn't use that word. But they really are disrupting my life. <laughs> Um, yes. Is there anything I can do to help with the migraines, or do you know how much longer it's going to last? The migraines will pass, but they will not pass until you have spent some time understanding what they actually are trying to communicate to you. This, in your case, the migraines are a cellular memory experience. So this is something that you have experienced in another lifetime. It has come up again now because it is time to address it and you have come to a point in your spiritual growth where you may address it. The idea being that there is a metaphysical idea behind what the three-dimensional humans call their health and their well-being. Now, whenever there is pain in the body, in the three-dimensional body, and it manifests to the self as pain, it is a reflection of fear. So yes, a migraine, an intense migraine is going to be a reflection of intense fear. The fact of, of that is... Continue, please. Of a past life? You said it had something to do with the past life, but it has something to do with fear in the present moment? Yes, yes. You have been presented with this in other lifetimes, yes. This has been a challenge that you have been presented with. It has come up again at this point in your life because now you are able to understand why and you have the opportunity to ask why. So yes, in the past, in your past lives, you have dealt with migraines. You have dealt with pain in these areas for various reasons. There are many lifetimes where it came about in different ways. Now, we could have a lengthy discussion about this. It is not appropriate. It is enough for me to tell you that at this point that it is fear presenting itself. Now, the fact that it is happening in the head, it tends to be more of an idea of fear of a belief system. Hmm. Now, when you experience the pain, however, when the cellular memory is brought up and referenced, it is actually a form of clearing. That's what you're right. doing is letting go of the fear in the experience of the migraines. Now, this is the opportunity you have. This is your body giving you an opportunity to eradicate cellular memory from yourself and your connection to source and the human collective. So please understand they may be incredibly unpleasant and, of course, they are distressing. Mm -hmm. But look to it as a way for you to disperse something that's been on your agenda for a very long time. And you may simply address it now. You may simply say, yes, this is fear-based. Yes, this comes from many experiences in my past. You may embrace it 
as you experience the back, the pain, do your very best that you may to embrace yourself gently. Hold yourself gently. Okay. Address yourself gently. Speak to yourself gently. Let go of the fear. You may need to do it in small increments. You may find there is a sequence. Follow your instinct. Let it go. It no longer serves you. It's not relevant. And it does not need to be held within your cellular memory any longer. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Much love to you. You're welcome. Much love. Hello, Amata. This is Hello. Sabrina. Yes, Sabrina. Um, I have one question from Liney. She would like to know if she's had any physical trips in the last week. I don't know if you can answer that. I can answer that. No, she has not. Okay. Thank you. And my question was... Um, about about um, reincarnation and spirit. Yes. Does each incarnation have its own spirit, or is it a shared spirit between all incarnations? I'm I'm talking particularly on Earth. I don't know if it works differently. Certainly. Yes, yeah, so understood. Each incarnation. It does include a separation of spirit, yes. It is the same separation of spirit. It is in your journey. Let us say, for example, yourself. The spirit that is you, that resides within you, the part of you that is relatable to source, this is your spirit. Now, this part of you, it's what will cross over to the spirit realm. This is where there will be negotiations, conversations. You may still evolve in the spirit realm. You, you do not necessarily need to incarnate further unless you choose to. Now, if you choose to, then yes, you absolutely do bring through that same portion of spirit that is known to be you. The lessonary is very specific and is designed to be particularly for your spirit's growth. Now, ultimately, the goal is to bring unification. The goal is to unify spirit, unify source. So as you work through in these small bubbles of spirit and move through the incarnations, learning the lessons, filling, fulfilling agreements, moving where you wish, progressing, then you do become more of your spirit realm and you do unify further. And this is the ultimate goal. If you keep in mind that ultimately these incarnations, these agreements, these lessonaries, they are all on a journey back to source and unification. So essentially, you are part of a huge uni unified state anyway. It is simply that you have made and created your own realities. So that is the answer. Okay, thank you. Um, Dan, who is next? Who's next? Yeah, there she is. I am. Hello? Hello. Hi, my name is Dugu. It's my first time in this session. Um, I'm very excited to be here with you all and share this moment. But um, I guess the question I have is that Taylor and I have been on this path to um, kind of figure out what our purpose is on this planet. And um, it would help a lot if we kind of knew our origin so we can make that connection to, you know, make the best out of our experience on planet Earth. Yes. 
When you reference origin, may you be more specific, please? Um, I guess the the feelings I'm having is, you know, and Taylor is the same way. We feel very disconnected and unsatisfied with, you know, the way the corruption and the people's mindset are on this earth. So um, I do believe that we are tied, our souls are tied to a different galaxy or um, yeah. different system than this. So it would really help a lot if you kind of knew our origin so, you know, maybe we can figure out from there. Yes. I'm going to answer your question in this way. Your origin is source, my friend. Any incarnated being is of spirit, is of source. Now, I understand what you are saying, that you feel that this is an unfamiliar territory for you. You feel you are an observer residing on this planet and perhaps you belong somewhere else. Now, if it were relevant for you to know where you came from, then you would know. It would be that simple. Part of the reason you are here is because you do not know. So please, if you have a journey, if you have been given a specific, a very exclusive glimpse into three, the three-dimensional human-orientated earth, then I encourage you to look to why, to look at what can you bring, what do you have, why are you here, not where did you come from. You are still having your own progress. You are still moving through your own processes. That is why you are here. So please do not separate yourselves and see yourselves as some kind of island. You are not. You are very much part of a collective of spirit. You are connected to the humans very much. There is not that much difference between yourselves and the humans. So please, you have a job to do. You know what that job is and that does not include you spending time looking at where you may have come from. It includes what benefits you may bring to planet Earth. Yes, wow. absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. Karen? Yes, hi. Hi. Greetings, um, Malatok. Hi. How are you? I'm a talk. Sorry, not Malatok. I'm a talk. How are you? Hello, Karen. I'm well, hi. thank you. How are you? Thank you. I'm very good. I have a question about healing. I would, I would like to see if you can explain to me, and this is for my own personal use, um, healing in the way of multidimensionality, and, and by what I mean by that is, if I'm working on uh, someone and I'm trying to bring healing to them and I know that I'm not the healer and I know it's just a, as, as a way of you know holding the idea of healing but on a multi-dimensional way is there a way that I can shift my consciousness into a different realm at, but at the same time be in the 3D realm and still be a conduit and be a more effective conduit of that healing energy I, yes. I just I, I've had this idea in my head for the last couple, week, and I'm having a hard time um, asking it because I don't know what really I'm asking. But I've been hearing I need to shift multidimensionally so that I can facilitate the healing in a stronger way. So I'm asking for some yes. clarification. What does that mean? Certainly. First of all, Karen, you yourself alone, singularly in the greatness that you are, we source, are a very effective healer. You, alone, are very effective. Now, yes, in your integrity, in your love, in your relationship with the human race, you wish to bring healing and practice it. And you would like to bring in other ideas, other sources, you use other methodology, to create these healing experiences to be more powerful. I honor you for that. There are several ways that you may do this. The most powerful way is to spend some time in meditation as you come to a time of healing. Now, whether this healing be upon yourself, 
which you may do, or another, it does not matter. As long as you have accessed the healing collective of the human and also you have source flowing strongly, vibrating through you in a very powerful sense, pure, very pure, because healing energy needs to be pure. You are able to channel through pure into your healing, Karen, because at your core you are naturally pure. Please, I wish to point this out. You are naturally pure. So you're healing regardless of whether you call in other modalities is ever effective. Another suggestion. May I recommend that you introduce some crystals into your healing. Now, this is something that, yes, it can become cumbersome because it comes down to the crystals being necessary for the individuals, for each individual person that you may be choosing to heal. The resonance with the crystals for each individual, again, it takes time to establish what resonates with both of you, particularly if you are serving a client who is not familiar with the idea of crystal usage. There may be times it is effective, there may be times it's not. Do you see? There are many modalities that are not necessarily efficient or effective. The most efficient and effective one is for you to connect to source and allow source to channel through you. You are already an open channel. You are already a pure one. So now simply channel the light of source through the modality that you use to deliver your healing. Connect with that. That will give you the most effective, efficient and powerful healing tool of all. Okay. Um, I, I do have a question. Thank you very much for that because I, 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 that feels very good what you said. Um, when, but also you use the word purity, which is also a word that has come into my thoughts. Um, and I'm thinking about... Uh, purity of the vessel, my vessel, um, as a conduit, and I'm thinking, does that meet, possibly mean fasting uh, or, you know, some sort of uh, preparation? Because I, this is, this is you know, this is a very serious healing, and it's a very, um, it, it needs to be as effective as possible. Um, and, and so whatever I have to do, I will do. So I'm just wondering. So I, is it is it also about fasting and and preparation? That is is that part of it as well? Yes, I'm sensing for you that this would be very helpful for you to have some kind of ritual beforehand. Yes. Okay. If it's something that builds upon your ability to heal then create yourself a ritual that resonates with you. And what I'm seeing you doing is actually spending time in meditation and you are calling upon the healing of the human collective. I can see the vibration entering into your body and then I can see how it grows as it resides. It flows through your entire body. Now this is the picture that I am seeing. It is also yeah, almost a levitationary experience. So this is what I'm going to ask you to work towards as your ritual before you come to healing. I would like you to meditate in a, in a position that is comfortable for you and encompass the idea of lightness, levity as in levitation, as in being without gravity. There is too much gravity around the experience of what is being healed. It is dense and it is affected by gravity. So to counterbalance that, you need to deliver a healing that is not encompassing gravity. Do visualize you doing levitations, please. Also, I would ask you to do the manifestation process in this way as well. Okay. All right, that, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Blessings to you. Blessings, Karen. 
I believe this were all the questions. If there's another entity that would like to come through, that would be great. And thank you, thank you, thank you, Amata, for answering all of our questions. You're welcome. And for being there for us. Yes. It was a pleasure. May I thank everybody. You are all wonderful beings. I thank you for your time. I thank you for your greatness. Thank you. I will bring him back briefly. Is there anybody else that wants to come through? Or just can you to bring? There's any. Mm -hmm. I will return him to them. Sure. Mm. Hi, everyone. <laughs> oh, I need a drink. <laughs> Hi Kim, how are you doing? <laughs> Hi Kim, welcome back. Thank you. She needs her water. <laughs> it's not blood, by the way. <laughs> um, oh my goodness. Did you want someone else, or because there is someone? I'm a talk. That's what we that's what we felt. Rowie felt the energy that someone else wanted to come through. So it kinda of popped up in our minds. So yes. That would be awesome. Okay. You good? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Alright. I'll see you soon with how long have we got? Um we can go for another half an hour or so. I've got a choice now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I thought as well. Yeah. yeah. Alright, we'll me. see who steps up first. Back soon. They can get a bit pushy though, so. <laughs> okay. Hi. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hello. Is this Topia? Yeah. Hello, Topia. How are you? Hi. Hi. Who's that? This is Sarah. Oh, Sarah. Hi. Hi. How are you? Doing very well. How, How are, are you? you? Oh, I'm good, thank you. <laughs> What's new at your colony? Oh, lots. I I was on a a, a longo stick, a <laughs> jumping stick. Yeah. <laughs> it was a bit tricky. Yes. Yeah. It was tricky. Ah, uh, yeah. My friend, they fell and they hurt their ankle. Oh. Yeah. But that's okay. That's all right because she will get better and she wants to do it again. And my teacher said that. Very good. Oh, very good. It's like jumping back on a horse after you fall. Yeah. Is there people? Yes, there's lots of people. 
some people want to know who you are. They haven't seen you in the webinar before. Oh, oh this is my first time. I yeah. hope it was okay. Mum said it's okay. I, my name is Topia and it's spelled T-O-P-I-A and I am as big as your knee and I am a hybrid child and I am from Orana and I am about two and a quarter earth years old. Tapia, what are you a hybrid of a human and another species? Yeah, I am human and yeah, yeah. Ah, thank you. Yeah. My friends are different ones. Some are like me and my friends, some are uh, from Syria and they are human hybrids and the other ones, Earth doesn't know yet. They are human hybrids too. Okay, thank you for explaining. Yeah. That's okay. If you want. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> is is there anyone else that I know? Hi, this is Sabrina. I just wanted oh. to ask you one question. Yeah. How old are you in Earth years? Yeah. Mummy says about two and one third, one quarter. How about that? In Earth years. Okay. And what kind of things do you get to eat over there? Do you get to eat anything similar to what we eat here? Yes. We eat lots of things like Earth children because we will be coming to live on Earth and we must learn how to be like the human children. So we eat lots of food that is from Earth. And which one is your favorite? I change my mind. Okay, so what's your favorite right now? Right now, I really like broccoli. Broccoli. Yeah. What, what about broccoli? Do you like the taste, the texture? Oh, you can cut it and it looks like trees. Yes, it does. Yeah, I, I like I that. Make a forest out of it. Yeah. Make, you make pictures. Yes. And, and I, I, I drew some broccoli too. And it looked very good. Oh, okay. So what do yeah. you eat your broccoli with? Do you eat it just by itself? Do you eat it raw? We, we sometimes eat it what you call raw, yes, because we also learn how to grow it. So when we grow it, the things that are safe for us to eat before you put heat on them or you make them very cold, then we, we, can, we can bite them and taste them. And the teacher says lots of the good things are still in it when it hasn't been cooked. To, to mm -hmm. it, it, it's crunchy. Like, and it's yummy. I like it. Good. I'm glad you like it. Mm. So you'll have lots of foods on Earth that you can have yes. and eat and are healthy. Yes. Um. What did you like to play? 
Oh, I changed that one too. It's okay. You can just tell me whatever you're enjoying at the moment. We're playing a game, and what we are doing is we are practicing things in the history of the earth. Okay. So, I, I like learning about things that happened on the earth. And there was one story where the the land the land was still joined all together, and that was when there was lots of aliens, and they were talking to there was some what they call people here already, and they didn't know until the aliens got there that there was somebody else. They were so far apart and they couldn't talk to each other. And then the aliens came and then they told them all about each other and they were very surprised. And the aliens, they took one person from each of these groups that you call tribes and they took them and they all met together and they made friends and they talked lots about their tribes and the gods and the foods like what you just said and oh lots and lots of things and this was very very important because this is a bit like what's going to happen when first contact happens on earth with the aliens and that's why I really like that story and I like to play that game and pretend that I am one of the tribes or I am one of the aliens it, it's all very interesting. Yes, it is, and uh, there are several aliens that I love. There's one particular one, but many, many that I love, such as Lakesh. I've gotten to know him, yes. you know, over the last year, and to Kerr, and to yes. Pei. Yeah, yes, so there there are several aliens that we've gotten to know here in our group um, but I'm glad to have spoken with you and maybe on another occasion we can speak again maybe you can tell me a little bit about how how are, are you progressing and things going for you okay yes we are doing very well and I have a message. Okay. Mummy said, Mummy said, like the first time, please tell the, the human parents because they've stopped a little bit to, to talk to the alien parents of the hybrid children, lots and lots more, please. Because it's very helpful when they do and, and, and they, they don't know sometimes what to do with some of us children when things go a bit wrong. And we need help from the human parents sometimes. So please can the human parents talk to the alien parents and just use words in their head and then we can all help each other. Okay, can you ask your mommy one question for from me? Can you ask her how would you like her uh, for us to talk to the parents in the astral during meditation and 
just while we're like in doing our everyday things? How would you like? Well, how does that work? Everything, everything, everything you said, and lots more. Okay, yes. beautiful. Thank you. Um, one of our other members has a question for you, so now she's going to ask you, okay? And thank you for speaking with me. Much love. Much love. Hello, Topia. It's Sarah again. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Um, I wanted to know a little bit about the plants that you guys play with. Are you growing the plants with your own energy at the moment? Yes. Yes? yes. How was that yes. experience? Some, some, we do, yes. Yes. Because cause I like to sing and I do the singing, I'm allowed to sing to the plants. And that's my energy helping to grow the plants. But we grow them like what you you call uh, organic. Yes. Yes. But but they they use our hybrid children energy too. Mhm. Mm yes. Good. They like it when I. Ask to sing to the plants. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I have another question. How is Gregory doing? Oh, I just saw him. <laughs> yes. He's 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 growing. Oh. He's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> is he speaking yet? Yes. Very good. And does he have anything to uh, share with me? Because I know he speaks telepathically. Yes, he was just telling me. Yes. He said... He said he's laid down in your bed. <laughs> Yes? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. Do you well, want me to tell him something? Well, tell him I love him and um, if he wants to lay down in my bed while I'm sleeping, that's great. I would love to connect with him again. Okay. He's been... He said, thank you. Thank you. Thank oh, you. He said, I have to say, thank you, mommy. Yes. <laughs> Sarah. Yes. Can I please come and sleep in your bed too? Yes, you can, Topia. Oh, okay. Thank <laughs> you. Wonderful. <laughs> and I would love to speak to the parents as well again, okay? Okay. Wonderful. I'll let the next person go. Hello. Hello, Hello Tupia. This is Noha. Yes, thank you. How are you, Tupia? This is Noha. Hello. I am very well, thank you. How are you? I'm fine. I love your spirit. You're so sweet. Uh, I resonate with you. Tell me, dear Tupia, are you uh, well? Uh, uh, where you know all of us from the human colony, each and the individual of us? Not everybody. No. Not everybody. I thought. Uh, okay. I would like. Are you getting prepared? To... Yes, we're getting to know you now. Anyways, uh, are you preparing yourself for the first contact? Yes. Mm, we, looking we do lots and lots and lots of that. Beautiful stuff. Looking forward to that. Yes. So are, are, are you, 
good. Tell me, are you uh, familiar with my hybrid children? They're half uh, Pleiadian. Sophia, I think there's an audio problem here with Noha. Okay. Can you hear me? You hear me now? I will hear you now, Noha. Please repeat what yeah. you were going to ask. Are you familiar with my Pleiadian children, hybrid children? Oh, Palladian, no, not yet. The other colonies, uh -huh. the Gurkfiknir ones, because there's, there's lots. The Gurkfiknir ones, we are learning all the names of the Gurkfiknir ones now. And mm -hmm. we have to look at them all the time and remember the names so that when we meet them it will be like we are best friends already and then we'll be able to bring you lots to speak to lots and lots and lots of hybrid children and the ones that you know too yes we already feel like best friends now. It's beautiful stuff. Mm. I just mm. saw you and I felt resonating with you. I felt so. Uh, I felt the connection. This is so awesome. You're so mm. sweet. I feel like hugging you. Come on, give me a hug. Energetically, be. <laughs> yeah, you're so adorable. Oh my God. Yeah. Kisses, 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 kisses. Ooh, I got chills, believe me. Yeah, yeah. God, I love you. Take care of yourself. Sweet child. Mm, thank you. Give you in peace. Bye. Bye. Hello, Topia. Oh, Hello, Dan. Dan. Yeah, hi. Hi. How are you? Oh, I'm good. How are you? I am good. I saw you the other day. Did you? You came, you came to see Ringo. Do you remember? Did you see me? Well, I, I knew you were here because Ringo saw you, and then I could kind of see like a little blip. Yeah, you kind of <gasps> came in through the ceiling, didn't you? Yeah, you come, yeah. in, you come in from the top? Yeah, because she always looks up when you come. You saw me? Yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, were you able wow. to hear me talking to you? Were you able to hear me talking to you when you were here? Some of it. Okay. All right. So we were able I, to keep her I calm agree. down. I, I, I was very careful with Ringo this time. Was she okay? Yeah, you could actually do a little bit more probably next time. Yeah, that last time was really, really good, but the next time you could maybe do a little bit more. I think she's starting to get used to the idea even better. Okay. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about stilts. Have you tried stilts yet, or just the pelvic oh, stick is the only thing that you've tried? You, you are magical, Dan. <laughs> we are doing stilts on your next Wednesday. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Good. Good. It's a bit scary. Start little. Start them very close to your ground and then work your way up. And then once you work your way up, you can get quite tall with them. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I remember when I learned, I started like just a couple of inches off the ground and learned how to work the sticks. And then we raised them up and raised them up and raised them up until we got quite high. I could almost get onto the roof of the house. I could get up like six or seven feet. Yeah, <laughs> we were we were really quite mental with our stilts. Well, that was before video games and everything. We had to do something, you know, to get into the trees better. Oh. Uh, so we, we used stilts. Did you uh, fall? Every once in a while. You had to learn how to fall and roll. You need to fall and roll like they do in parachute class. Oh. You, need to, you, need to, you need to drop and roll. <laughs> then then that takes the, the brunt of it off of you. Oh, you like to, when you have your fires. Kind of. You kind of drop and roll, and uh, that lets the energy of the fall kind of. So if you have any kind of 
it, it's easier if you fall forward. If you fall backwards, that doesn't work so well. If you fall forward and have a forward momentum, you can kind of do a somersault or whatever, some kind of roll and uh, let the energy disperse so you don't hit the ground so hard. If you roll, it's easier. Okay. And you don't break so many things when you roll. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. I, I will do that. Okay, and if you wanted to come and stay sometime, if you want, like when you come and see Ringo, if you want to come and stay for a while, if you want to lay down or whatever, if you just want to see what I'm doing on the internet or whatever, just, yeah, you're free to linger if you like. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, tell the others I said hi. I know, I think I saw them like last week, but tell them I said hi from physical reality. Hi, okay. Ringo. All right, okay. thank you. There's there's another question from um, from Roxy, or not Roxy from Valerie coming on. Oh, Rowie has a question too. Okay, I'll oh. step out. It's wonderful to see you, hon, and I'll see you later. Thank you, Dan. I love you, and and love to Alex. Okay, yeah. I'll, oh, yes, and Alex does say hello, and she said hello to Elma talk too, and I forgot to say. Okay. All right, all right. We'll see you later. Okay. Sophia, yeah. it's wonderful to have you with us again. Thank you. Send my love to Vinny. Um, I would like to ask about your visitations to Earth and your interactions. How often are you able to do this? Or is this not a linear process? Mm -mm. It's just when the teacher thinks it's a good idea that we need to come for something special. Or sometimes it's if we do very good work in class. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we learn lots of human things in that day and we are allowed. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, would you be interested in visiting a class of in of uh, a class that we have in our schools on Earth? Would that be possible? Visit a class of children, learning? Yes. There's a member called Jillian, and oh, she would like to... I know Jillian. Yeah. She would like to put an invitation out for you to visit her, as long as it's agreed upon, and it's okay. There's an invitation there to visit her class. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. Thank you. It's, can Jillian, is she listening to me? Yeah, if you talk to the front of the camera, yeah, she's, she's Thank listening. Thank you, Jillian. Thank you. I think, I think I will be loud. So thank you very much. I I will let you know. I I will speak to him when I can come. Thank you. Um, is there another question? Yes, Tell thank me. you. So nice to meet you. Hello, is that Valerie? It is. Hello. I love children. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> could you. Could you tell me if you have met a little boy named of Cashy Hyde? Cashy? Yeah. I, I know one called Cashy. That's wonderful. Can you tell me how well he is doing? Yes, he is very good and his favorite color is red. <laughs> Beautiful. And he likes to build buildings. When he's playing, he pretends. Yeah. How sweet. Can you say if there's any messages for his parents at this time? I I will ask. Thank you. 
they are saying he, he likes to build things and sometimes some sometimes he wants to bang like this and and the teacher says that when you build things on earth you you have you have a nail and a hammer. Yeah, that's right. right. Yes, yes. And and he so he does this and his his mum and dad think that this might be wrong. So could you please talk to them and tell them if that's okay or not? Yes, I definitely will. Yes, thank you. Does he have any messages for his brother, Colton? Yes, he says he wishes he could play with him more. Yes. Uh, he's, he said, but he does know about him. Yes. Can you tell him that Colton misses him so much and loves him dearly? He says yes, he knows. He said to say he is very, very, very happy. And he loves you all and he will visit when he can. And does he know of his little sister, Rebel, now? Yeah. Did he meet her before she was born? Yes. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day today. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye now. Bye. Tapia, do you have any brothers or sisters? We don't have brothers and sisters. Okay. No, just a quick question I wanted to know. We, we have, we, we call them cousins. But they, they are like brothers and sisters. Okay. So it's the same. Oh, okay. Thank you. That's a lovely way of looking at it. Yeah. Shrone, can you come? Yes, thank you. Hello, Sophia. My name is Sharon. How are you? Hello, Sharon. I Hi. am good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. I'm very happy that you're here. I have a Thanks. question. Well, I invite you and any other playful uh, hybrid children. I work with children as well, and I invite you all into my room to play with the infants, the babies, and the other small children as well. The babies? Yes, babies. Oh. Oh, <laughs> very thank <tiny>. you. <laughs> I, I will be very, very careful. I think they will love you. Uh, I think I will love them. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. And I have a question from Flava. And he says, Hello, Topia. Do you now or do you know my Yael hybrid child, Targa? 
He is about your age. Please send him many hugs and kisses if you will see him. Much love to you, dear Sophia. Could you please tell me the name again? Targa. Okay, I will remember. Thank you. Thank you. And does anyone have any other questions for Topia at this time? I have I one have question. I have to go soon. Okay, let's take one more question from Johannes, and then we will uh, we will let you go then, Topia. Okay, just one more. Okay. All righty. Thanks, Guru. Thanks, Topia. I have just one question. If uh, my hybrid child uh, has any messages for me, or if he wants to contact me, tell me anything. What Said. is his name? Said. S uh, Z E D. Z. I think he's on the Gurfik Mir colony. He's from the Gurfik Mir? Yeah, he's he's on the list of names we are learning. Okay, that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, that's, <laughs> thank you for that anyway. <laughs> Much love. Love you too. I, I, I better go now. Okay, thank you, Topia, for coming, and I'll, uh, I'll see you again soon. Thank you, Topia. Love you. And I love everyone at the colony. <laughs> thank you. Love everybody, and lots of kisses and hugs. Kisses and hugs. <laughs> And I'll see you soon. See you soon. See you soon. Love to finish it. Yeah. I've been here back then. Yeah, you do that. That's great. Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 Hi, sweetie. Welcome Hi. back. Welcome back. Hi, Rusty. Yep. Hi, Sarah. Thanks, guys. How are you doing? Are you going to tell doing? me the lay down and what happened? Sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah, one second. <laughs> Was I helpful? Yes, Alma Talk had great wisdom. There were many fine words, and then Topia got to visit for her first really big public webinar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can, you can still feel it, huh? Yeah. yeah. Especially the hands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. She just scratch me one day or something. <laughs> yeah, you cut your nails, so it doesn't happen. <laughs> So be yeah. Oh the oh the kisses. Yeah, I bet you got dabbed with you probably got impaled a little with your nail kisses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why she does that, doesn't she? Yeah, just doink 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 doink. Yeah. I saw that. Times. I was like a video and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's That's funny. Funny. Yeah. Uh, but she just gets so excited. She loves them. Them hugs and kisses. She loves it. Yeah. They don't get a lot of time, that's why. I think it's it's a human thing. It's a really human thing. Yeah. It's uh anybody else? Um well we've done two and a half hours now, so I think uh, yeah, yeah. It's pretty yeah. Good. You oh. want to wrap it? Yeah. So yeah. um Announcements again, Roy, or what you I've want got to a do? couple of things I wanted to want to say at the end. Um, I will invite anyone to do a blessing or um, yeah, to, so I, I can do one. If, if if not, 
Maybe Sarah can do a, a language one. Yeah, there you go. <coughs> okay. Karanta ya tia tu kurunta na ya su tu pa kashu tu kana kia si kia tu koha la ti so kaya tia no koya kata si kia ta kuchu tu ha na ya su kwa na ya tia ha. Nu kushu ati kutolo na kia sukutuhana. Namaste. 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 Thank you, Namaste. Thank you. Rocks. Yeah. Rory, do one? <laughs> no, I was going to let, let the people, please. Yeah, I was going to ask if Roxy wanted to, to say something. Yeah. Now that her throat is all clear. Yes, my pardons. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi gorgeous. Okay, good. Um, would you like to hear from Sylvester? Oh, yeah. go on. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Stand by. One Hi. <laughs> hi. This is fine. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't done this before on this. I've done it in the channeling thing. I did it on the channeling, and that was it. Oh, Sylvester, you are awesome, honey. Yeah. Hi. Oh, yeah. I am. <laughs> it's fun to be me. Yeah. Yeah. This time. Yeah. Last time I was a human, that wasn't so fun. I didn't think so, but it was fun after I thought about it. But before it was like, holy shit, that's not so fun. <laughs> it was fun after it was done. So, <laughs> so that, that 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 taught me to be fun here this time around. Oh. So that's why I didn't give myself not um, um, f not so much fun, so I can learn that everything is fun. It was it was a good one for me. I, I I enjoyed it a lot. It was it was so sweet, and 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 now I get to I get to have fun eating all the time cereal and ice cream and and playing as this little thing. Cause I gave myself good parents. I did. <laughs> I said I want good parents this time. Not. Well, they weren't bad last time, but they were kind of dumb. <laughs> that's that's funny. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Shh, no, don't let Sylvester know that this Sylvester said that. Shh. <laughs> Our secret. <laughs> so, so yeah. you want a bless? You want a blessing? Yeah, yeah. Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Okay. A blessing sounds good. Okay. Hang on. <clears throat> And greetings, everyone. This is Sylvester, the Oversoul, not, let's say, portraying the eye through the idea of my, my little fractalized self as a five that of humanity. So I'd like to say that of hmm, humanity, <clears throat> a blessing, if you will. Let it be known that all entities that are now listening to this were chosen to be blessed. That in and of itself requires no attention to be blessed. You can play in the field of blessings, but once you understand inhibiting on yourself that blessing is a needed idea, you will stay in the construct of that. Nothing wrong with that. However, we would like you to know that the blessing is that you're always blessed. And this realization that you were chosen by consciousness to exist that, in and of itself, as my good friend Bashar says, you are blessed. Booyah. Booyah. Sound good? Perfect, as if it is. Thank you. Booyah. Sounds wonderful. Yeah. Not O. I used O, but this is Sylvester. 
ah. you see the difference is, is, I guess you can see, I don't know if you can see the eyes are open. Yeah. Because <laughs> what I get to do is be this down here, and Roxy gets to be me up here. So therefore, I get to be the human down here, and she gets to understand me up there. So I get to play with this wonderful body. Yay. Wow. Really <laughs> cool. What's everybody? Uh, we are a blessing from Roxy. We are blessed indeed in that. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she rocks. She's 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 doing very well, very well. You know, as, as far as as far as any kind of measure, which there are none, she is doing well with herself, which is the only measure. Always know that. Yes. I don't care what rule book you read. I don't care what gauge you look at. I don't care what scales you balance with. It's all yes. down to your own idea. Ever, uh -huh. forever. Think about that gift. Forever. You were the only one being that balancer, being that judge, being that rule book, being that guide. It's you know it's it's a it's a kick in the ass for humanity. Think about it, because you're like, well, can I really really hold on to myself? Can I really say that it's okay with me and me alone? Because that gives you that such that awesomeness that it scares you. Oh yes, because all your life you've been taught that any kind of support. Well, I'm here to say bullshit. You're your own support. That's where it all lies, child. Oh, yeah. What a rocking show you guys created. It's getting better. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here, Sylvester. I just wanted to say hi. Who's that, Sharon? Yes, Sharon. What's up, hi. baby? What are you doing? I am just so happy to be here. I'm... That's it. We're so happy to be here. Nice choice. Everything good? Come on, I'm mute that thing. We're talking. What, it's what's awesome. Matter? You don't have to be. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I'm doing awesome. <laughs> and my nice mother, mom. Julie. She said, "Here's Julie. She's right here. She's doing awesome." I think. <laughs> Hello. Good deal. Hi, Julie. How are you, baby? Um. Fucking fantastic. <laughs> wow. Beautiful. Did you feel the vibration? See, that, that's what you can use it in, among humanity vulgar because that's the ego using it. But when you use it in love, it just has so much meaning, doesn't it? Fucking fantastic. I think so. <laughs> yes. Now you can see like... Like Abba talk, was talking about vibration. Vibration and your intention creates the reality. And if you're creating out of the idea of love, then how can the mirror be anything but that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Make sense? So, I think so. Hmm. Amazing. No, you know so. It is only your definition that says, I'm not sure. Bullshit. Bullshit. Yes, you do. Choose it. Choose yourself. Right on. Right on, I do. Yes. There you go. Now I can feel the isness of that entity that says, I'm lost. No, you're not. You found yourself. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Right? You got it. Always stop and step back and look at the pic picture and stop and go, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. Let me sum up how awesome I am. Hmm? Mm -hmm. I know I'm God. I may not act upon it. I'm still working through my beliefs. But I was chosen and I know I'm God. You can always go back to that and say, wow. That's pretty awesome, and that gives you a nice vibrational standpoint, a safe place, whatever you want to call it. And then you can move from your isness into the next idea from that point of security if you need that blanket. Doesn't matter. But that idea, always step back and say, wait a minute, I'm awake. I'm realizing something else here. That in and of itself will only funnel in a boatload of vibrations for expansion of that idea, openness now. So rock your world, darling. Yes. I have been following. Yes, I have been following some wonderful ideas, and it's been fantastic. Seamless, isn't it? Synchronicity works out when you don't interfere with your own life. The ego is the yeah. interference. You don't have to run interference with your own reality because you already set it up. It's only vulnerable to the reality that you've set up. Trust it. Trust it. Trust it. And then it's effortless. And then you're like, holy cow, how can all this stuff keep happening? It's so awesome. Oh, my God, I'm just going to explode with bliss. Yes. <laughs> it is. 
It is, isn't it? Beautiful. It is. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Good group today. Is that what we say? Good messages. Indeed, Sylvester. What's that? Is that what we say? Yeah. Great impression. There you go. Very good. Cool beans. Well, I'm here if you got any questions. If not, I'm going to zip out. I just want to say love you, Sylvester. I think it's awesome you're here. Well, thank you there, big Sarah O. Why well, we have to sing your name? Because when we talk to you, we always sing your name, Sarah O. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Well. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Because you're a vibrational tune out there. You put out your music. That's your signature. Your phone call. Your connection. Whatever you want to call it. Yes. Cool stuff. Yeah. Love it. All right. I'm loving the idea of the Anybody? oversoul and the fractals, but the oversoul decided to incarnate. I'm just, I can't get enough of that right now. <laughs> Beautiful. Hi, hi, Sylvester. I never said hi to you before, but hi. This Karen. Is Karen. Yeah, yeah we know. What's up, baby? <laughs> I, well, I, I know Osiphius, but I don't know Sylvester, so. Well, let's put it like this. So, Sylvester, in context, is Roxy's Abraham. Osiphius and the rest are what you would call the Bashars, the Cryons. Make sense? Yes. You're like yes, my Theos. Very good. Os Osiphius oh, sure. is like Theos, and then I don't, I don't know if I, who my right. Sylvester is. Now I'm going to look for my own Sylvester. You'll find your Sylvester. Everyone will. <laughs> But see, the thing is, is humanity can't find the Sylvester of the self until you meet the thing. It's a progression. It's an idea of expansion. And then you get Great. to play in this energy field, which is completely different. And I want to tell you something. On the healing thing, can I, can I, can I, can I offer on that for a second? Yes, yeah, please. You're a shuttle. Okay? Yes, I know. You're a shuttle for the infinite intelligence. The two right. that come together or more Maybe in the back. idea... Maybe. The two or more in the idea of healing creates a space of a, of a, let's say, sanctuary in your confinable mind, okay? That entity has to be open, has to be ready. That's the first question you ask anyone that you're, you're going to heal and heal in that idea. Right. Is the patient, in your, your terms, ready to accept the healing? Otherwise, it's yeah. done. No matter how so. much you are a great healer, if it's not accepted, all you got to do is read how Je Jesus did. That's the one to this very close that you can healing for infinite intelligence to heal. Curse level, you're what you will in themselves. In that idea of the patient and rebirth, regrow in the body. Guys, remember, the body's created now, 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 as you choose it. If the healing modality and the shuttle of infinite intelligence allowed it with no inhibitions, no ego from you saying, I'm the healer, or no, let's say, limitations by the one believing the healing, when that circuit is closed, the only thing that can happen is the regeneration of whatever part of the body that needs to be healed in its original state, which every human idea is born perfect under the guise of the blueprint they set up. Okay, So yeah, that's why you can't look at an idea of someone that is born deformed if you want, or with a kind of a mental illness. That is perfect because that's their journey. But in this idea, if they were perfect on birth and they were healthy and they an idea gave themselves a disease probably through anger. Most diseases are caused by anger, especially cancer. They took this idea and conformed it into what a disease is. And now the body represents itself with every new body that you create every second. Remember that. We'll only do it as the status quo of the believability of the idea patient. Now the patient changes themselves, all right? And I was open to the idea. Now the regeneration of the stem cells of whatever part that is what you call diseased, that disease, will now start to regrow itself in the new bodies of now. 
It will take time, but in that idea, how much time, all the individual choices and all that. But the key, and you, Karen, you're not the healer. You're the conduit, the shuttle for infinite intelligence to come through in its pure state, as you just said, purity. Hmm? This pure state to be the vibrational acceptance of that with no ego infringement to distort that frequency of in intelligent infinity that's coming in to allow the stem cells of that individual to regrow in its natural birth. However, one side note, there are some that won't be able to be healed because it's not within the construct of their blueprint that they want to experience. So no frustration is in play if the outcome is not idea perceived as what is valid in the idea of judgment. In other words, are they healed? Does it matter? You don't look for the outcome because that will, let's say, put an expectation on a probable future that you're energizing that doesn't serve you. So you you got this right, Karen? Yeah, I, the 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 individual is my dog, and um, and I had gotten information about uh, the multi Thomas. Reality. No, Apple. Um, and, Apple. And um, I got information about healing on two two dimensions at once, and I was just trying to I'm trying to still get an understanding of the mentality, the state that I need to be in in order to do sort of a, um, you know, like a psychic sur surgery kind of healing. So I think she's open. She's not actually uh, sick at the moment, but some things are going on. So I'm, I'm really looking at what do I need to shift into, and I know that I'm not the healer. I think I said that straight in the beginning, that I'm the conduit of the energy. Yes. Um, but anyway, so yes, you did. I'm quite interested in, again, how to shift that energy multidimensionally so that it's not just sort of me here laying on hands trying to pull energy out of the ether, but, but working on a multi, you know, working on another dimension as well as working okay. on this dimension and trying to sort of shift the mentality. Listen, listen, listen. You are in the third density. That's where the healing is going to occur in that density of the etheric body that sits right outside of this body. You look at the body. There's an etheric body going in, 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 in right now. That's the body you're going to create because that's the influence. However, functionality that's already there. You cannot not be there. You don't have to focus there because then you're look. Let's say. Uh, diminishing the focus of where you're at. Make sense? Yeah. Follow that. It's okay to be here, just know you're already there because there is no here and there. It's always here and there. Always, always, always. But the mo the mo the main energy rather is going to be focused on the etheric body of the reproduction of that IE animal. And you can call on the Syrian idea, the Sirius star, call the dog star, and ask them to uh, shuttle in some energy with, as well. Make sense? Yes? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, now we can. Oh, sorry. You're I think I was, I think I was muting when I was talking and unmuting when I wasn't. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Awesome blossom, possum. Michelle? You'd like to have a question? You're not unmuted, Michelle. You may have to do it twice. Nope, it's not working yet. Try your uh, try your gear setting and redo your mic. Maybe so. Can you hear me? Yeah, we got you now. Okay. Um, I guess my question is... You don't have to guess. Okay, I know my question. I just don't know if I want to voice my question. <laughs> sure you do. Um, Otherwise, we wouldn't be talking right now. Get it out. Who, who right. am I? I'm you. I'm God, which is you. So are the entities right. in the room, and they have no judgment on you. 
That is your only fear, so step through the fear and see the love on the other side of that. That's how it works every time. Rock and roll. All right, so I'm probably going to cry. Um, I would love you to cry. Beautiful healing. So um, my daughter has come to live with me, and I've lived alone for, like, almost two years, kind of in okay. meditation. And uh -huh. I really like being alone. <laughs> right. And... We have a contract to heal things, and I feel like I'm shutting down, and it's really uncomfortable. And I will yes. like meditate through it and send love, of its own healing, send gold light. Like, but it remains uncomfortable, and I'm okay with that. I just wonder if I'm missing something, or also Definition. there is a little. Stop. Um, Let's stop right there. Let's not jump ahead. Definitions. Okay. First off. You and her are were separated, right? For two years, right? Yeah. Hmm? You've been alone for two years, rather, right? Yes. And what did you say? Roxy ate some food. What did you say that you guys are now together to work out a contract? Really? Yeah. A contract? Well, Come that's on. what... Listen. Alma Pack told me that we were working out our contract. I understand. I understand. And that is, okay, but that was then and this is now. Alma Talk gave you the idea of realization and realization and we're expanding. It's your choice to take it or not, but you're not obligated to this contract. What I'm talking about here is not the contract in and of itself. It's idealized as you two being separate. A contract has two sides. Oops. Make sense? I'm over here and you're over there and we have to work out this idea of middleman. That's the contract. Or you say, okay, she's me in an aspect of me, so I'm going to watch myself in the mirror and the beauty and the creation. And as soon as you shift that idea, you're going to get a different version of her every single time. It cannot be any other way because you're no longer in the idea of separation. Shift, reality, mirror, shifts, reaction, feedback is a different version. can't be any other way. Remember the law. What you put out is what you get back. We'll say it a million times. So now understand that you are defining that or that's what you will get back in the mirror, that you are working through something, that you're offering a healing. That's awesome. But you can go beyond that. You can go to the simplicity of the idea that's God journeying home and you're allowing them to be in this Garden of Eden. And that Garden of Eden is your love, your compassion, your allowance, your acceptance, your vulnerability to that moment. Does this make sense? Yes. Are you following? Yes? Yes, it makes perfect sense. But I just want to run yes. away. <laughs> Don't run away. Don't run away. Engage in love. Engage in, in, in breathing your idea reality. It's like, wait a minute. She's here. She came to me because I have a vibration of a magnet. That magnet is love, and they want to know what it is. And when they come in here and it doesn't resonate with what I am, that's where the mastery comes in. That's where the mastery comes in to shift that ego, swallow your pride, and say, wait a minute, they're here because they came to me because I'm vibrating love. They're going to give them that. It is love, not separation, not anxiety, not escape, not running away, not defining. It's being the simplicity of love that you are in the moment. Don't think just because this happened, it's going to happen again. Don't think because you were this and they were that. Because if they were that, then you say you're that, they're going to be that again, and you repeat. Follow it, baby. Follow the trust that you called her to your reality to give her the love. This, if you want to call it, is a contract of what you call probable reality that you're playing out right now because you're ready for it. Make sense? Yes. You got this. All of this, this moment right now, my words are you that wrote them, not me. I didn't write them. You wrote them to tell you through this idea so you can get it in this fashion so you can expand yourself right now. Thank you. Make sense? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. That's just that that that's how beautiful it is. That's how simple it is that you can allow yourself to get these ideas just by being yourself. You attract, you attract, you attract, you attract, you attract. All right? Thank you. Much love.
But if you need anything, give Roxy a call or get a hold of her, and we'll talk that way if you need it. And we're not talking about a session or anything like that. We're just talking about words of wisdom at some time that you, that you might need, all right? Thank you. So don't throw that blockade in your way. Right? Thank you. Yes. Booyah. Booyah. We like to use that. I, I've noticed. Oh, that's <laughs> cool. Oh, we're, Thank you, Sylvester. We're still live. That was beautiful. Your mm. presence and your also debut, I guess, here on Human Colonies was most welcome. Um, I think, did we have another question? Or is that not happening now, Dan? No, I do, if, if she feels up to it. Oh, I feel up to anything you guys want. Read <laughs> on, I think, is the uh, slogan for that one. <laughs> okay. Well, my question has to do with my eyes. I um, seem mm. to be having a re my retina tearing in my left eye, and um, so now I'm seeing spots in the eye. Is, is, do you mm -hmm. have anything to say about that? Yeah. Would you like to know? I would, please. Okay, there you go. <laughs> okay, listen. <clears throat> Visualization, your conduit, your eyes, your, your senses that give you reality are reliable and relied upon. Are you following so far? You get this? Yes. yes. See where it's going? As soon as you disconnect to that idea that you have, let's say, open your third eye, and you're not allowing it to be that awesome, you're going to diminish your eyesight for a particular idea. So you will rely on different values of senses. And please don't think the five senses, because those are, those are body-encased, stricture of the body. We're talking vibration and... They come in in feeling, feelings translated into images, and you can literally be that much, let's say, seeing, not relying on this 1% right here that you guys call eyes. After you accept that, it'll heal. And you can use the modality of a doctor. Don't be afraid of Western medicine or Eastern medicine doctors. Guys, that's a tool, and it's still very valid until the human collective is done with it. So whatever feels right, follow, but first, Open yourself up to the third eye. Now, we're not talking the imagination eye that says, okay, real quick, everyone, a little, uh, let's say, idea of a <clears throat> practicum. Uh, everyone, picture a house, beautiful. Picture a cat, good. Picture a dog, wonderful. Picture a tree, wonderful. That's imagination. Okay, we're talking about the visualization as it, in that the third eye bringing the image not in imagination, but as I'm looking at two worlds, one through my eyes and one through my third eye. That's where you're going with this. And that is a portal. Make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you so much. I appreciate your you're wisdom. Welcome. Oh, sure. Thank you. Yes, I believe Roxy might be hungry now. <laughs> I don't know. What's she eat? Yeah, she eating I don't know. I'm not going to check in. I don't <laughs> So, unfortunately, we are sort of running out a little bit of time here, Sylvester, so we're going to make a close. No, unfortunately. Perfect now. We're all good. Yeah. Just want to uh, say uh, our gratitude for you making an appearance with us today. That was the surprise, even surprise to yeah, us. Yeah, So, many blessings to you. <laughs> we're so happy for yeah. our fans you know, to make this connection. Believe it, it really touches us when we hear you talk and we hear Roxanne talk as well. It really is beautiful. So many thanks for that. And you're many of your welcomes, if you will. Hmm. Well, All right, I'm going to zip on back out. What's that? Thank you for coming, Sylvester. Thank it was you. nice to see you. Well, good to see you too, Dan. All right, guys, I'm going to bring O back. Well, that like transition state, I guess, into O into Roxy because she just pops out like this and it's like, ah! it's a little bit of a shock. So I'll see you on the next now. Love you. That's all. Hi guys! Hoo ah! Yes. Wasn't that fun? <laughs> yeah. Hey, that was awesome. Oh yeah. So best you Guys, you know what, Roxy? Could you get any more dynamic than you already were? Well, you just did. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, he's he's funny. I watched him like I watched the video he channeled yesterday. I haven't posted it, but I was like, wow, this guy is just really freaking cool. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah, it's really good. I love it. <laughs> you can see your excitement as well. I mean, that. that oh yeah. So, so yeah. So good. It's a whole you. new playground. A whole new playground. I love it. So as we come to the top of the hour, it's been new three hours, guys. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you've had a good time. I just want to awesome. thank all the viewers, all the entities that came today, and also all our members that interacted. You're all absolutely fantastic. You're all beautiful channelers. You're all channeling right now, so don't worry about how you're doing with your channeling and all that. Brenda would say all that crap, all that mix, you know. So you're all channeling now, so it's all beautiful that you take part. Um, I just want to mention that please, if you do find Human Colony TV appealing, please subscribe, hit that subscribe button, let us know where you support that way. Also, um, that um, please um, sign up on the website as well if you're interested in the Gurk Fit News and the colonies. If you do find the information um, helpful, and you're able to donate. There is a donation function there as we work purely off donations um, to help keep these, um, these, these um, things facilitating. We are actually looking into having a much bigger interactive group very soon because of the donations that we've been receiving. So as we grow, so do you. It's just a mirror, a reflection, and we find that really beautiful. Just want to mention about the meditation again on Sunday. So tomorrow at 7 p.m. EDT, I'll be leading a guided meditation on laughter. So I hope you can join me for that. Um, just want to mention about Kim's personal sessions as well. She's got another special offer. Um, so if you want to do personal sessions with Kim, speak to Alma Talk or many other beings, please check out www.humancolony.org slash Kim, and you will find her personal sessions there. Um, also, uh, Roxanne does personal sessions as well, so please check out Odyssey of Ascension on YouTube. Um, I think you can get the links from there. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, you can get the links to contact Roxanne for yeah, yeah. the Ascension. And, um, yeah, that's about it, guys. I think three hours of beautiful channeling, wonderful interactions. Thank you very much. Blessings to you all. Yeah, awesome, to everyone. Love you all. Mwah. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Much love. Thank Much you. Love. Much love. Thank you, everybody. Much love. Much love. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>